Hey Explorers, Andrew Cross here. Welcome back to my channel. So today I'm doing something different than my usual. Um, instead of an abandoned place, I'm doing a historic trail in Algonquin Provincial Park. Um, it's a logging trail, so here we go. This is a 140 year old white pine. Some quick facts before I get to the first building here. Um, Algonquin Provincial Park is the third biggest in Ontario and also the oldest provincial park in all of the province. Okay, so I'm at number one. Life in a caboose shanty. So I'll be showing you what they lived in at the beginning of logging. I won't keep it on this long enough, but if you guys want to pause and read everything, you can. So this is what they lived in back in the early 1800s. I'll go inside and get a look for you guys. So that was number one of 20 on this exciting trail. I hope you guys enjoy this video. So we're coming up to the next, how our stable I think this might be. So this is inside the stable. We have the feeding troughs back here. Some of the equipment for the horses. Window for the horses. So it's a little stable, it's got four different stalls, but it does the job. Number two. A horse was a logger's best friend back in the woods because it's going to be hard to pull those big logs by your human strength. So they did a lot of work for them and they helped them a lot in this industry. Um, they lost the horses, they lost lives. So I'm glad to hear that they worked hard. This is showing relief cuts. And then they cut it to flatten it for shipping to make all the logs squared. Here's a early uh, crane, it's got a pulley system. As you can see over there is a horse, so that's powered. The pulley was powered by a horse to drag logs from the pile onto the sled. Uh, so now we're at different methods of plowing the tracks where they um, drag the logs. Okay, so this first plow pushed the snow out of the way. The V plow flattened it and kept it um, straight. And then they had this huge sled that would drop water every night on the trail to make it freeze overnight so it would be nice and slippery for the next day. Number six is talking about how they did stuff on the hills. This over here, they had uh, another pulley system that would loosen our slowly big heavy piles of wood drawn by horses down hills. So that's pretty interesting. 
Number seven is talking about how they mark the timber for different companies. These are some examples here. So when they brought the shipments in, they would know which company's logs were whose. Tom Thompson was a famous artist from the area. He actually went out on Canoe Lake one day and never came back and they found his body a few months later. But here's some of his art. So number eight is a cage crib, which is a type of barge that they put logs on, or helps drag the logs, I think. So the horse actually had its own little stable on this, and to move, it would go, walk around in circles, moving that mechanism. So now I'm coming up on the William M. It's one of the last used barges out here. Um, steam powered. It could go on land and water. So I'll get a look inside of that for you guys. I'll go down to the steam engine first. Big pulley system for dragging stuff. And then the actual engine is on the other side. While I'm doing this hike, I might as well show you guys some of the nature. It's super beautiful. If you ever have a chance to come up to Algonquin for camping or even just a day tour or this or that, I uh, recommend it for sure. I've done 11 trails while I'm here, canoeing, swimming, and right after this video, I'm actually going horseback riding, so. So this is the captain's wheel. And right before I got in here, I noticed that these guys have a little replica going down here. So I'm gonna film that. So this is another one of their main boats they use here. I'll get over to the history for you guys in a second. But um, they're called the pointer. As you can see, each end is very pointed. Couple pictures for you guys. And then the history. Like I said uh, before, if you guys like, um, I just pause it at each section and you can uh, read it. So this here is a winch for um, logs getting jammed and whatnot. They could put a hook on it and at least try to move it around a little bit. And that's what uh, section 11 is all about. It's about the tools that they use. They use their hooks and whatnot for moving log jams. As you can, it's hard to see because of this glass, but try to get you guys the best view. One's pointed with a hook on the side of it, and the other's two points like that. Um, this next part to me is interesting because it shows you how. Um, the terrain is a hard thing to get by, but they put their heads together and came up with some interesting ways to do it. 
Um, so here you guys go, I'll show you it. So they would build a dam that had an opening like that, direct all the logs to it. And this is when there's big rocky areas that would be super hard for the logs to get down. They made a sort of slide to keep them all together and bring them to where they needed to go. Let's go check out the history on it. That is a small example there behind me, but these are some actual pictures of the dams. And then underneath the really big chutes, like some of them look to be a couple hundred feet long. This one's a good example going over the rocks because obviously the logs would never make it over that without. Um, I mentioned this earlier, logging was a super hard job and unfortunately horses, people pass away and things, accidents happen, right? So this is a example that's been here for this is 1903, so what's that? 117 years. This is someone's memorial. And then they have information about how this type of stuff could happen. It's uh, very sad. It's the danger of the job, right? But these people were literally the backbone of a lot of our economy at the beginning of Canada. So like, uh, amen to them and thanks for their work. And without them, our country wouldn't be the same. So now I'm on 14. Um, before I show you guys that, I'm gonna show you guys this cause gotta be careful. It's a big old wasp nest up here. And see them all in there too. But yeah, this was supposedly one of the biggest innovations of the time. They started way back in the 1830s and then come up with this, or they used axes until they came up with this in the 1870s, which is a saw that would remove the stuff. So when they cut, all those uh, sharp parts would cut, but then the big loop parts would pull out the excess that was stopping them from using saws. And then just go back and forth. Okay, so I think coming around the corner here, we're coming up to um, more modern log cabins that they used from those first ones you guys saw. Um, this is called the Saw Log Camp. So I'll show you this out to you guys. Okay, so this is like a blacksmith where they did uh, repairs for equipment and also um, put horseshoes on and did everything for the horse. So this middle part where the framing is, is where the horse actually stood while they worked on them. But yeah, they got the sharpening stones. All kinds of tools to show you guys. Anvil and obviously the blacksmith's um, furnace. And when I go across, this is another stall that was used for the horses. It's a little bit bigger than that first one you guys saw. We got more advanced as the years went along. This one's a six horse stall. The framing and stuff, if you looks a little bit more advanced. As I was saying, 15 is um, a whole saw log encampment. The first building I showed you was a blacksmith, then the stable. 
And then the next two will be their living quarters and dining area, or the cookery as they call it. Get you guys the history and head over to the cookery. So the one closest to me is the cookery and the further one is their living quarters. So I'll show you guys this. Big old picnic tables, I guess you could call them. As you can see, everything is pretty much made of wood, clearly, because they're loggers, so they're, all they do all day is cut wood. Um, they got their range here. Okay, gonna go into the living quarters, show you guys that real quick. So um, these would bed around 20 to 30 people, I think it said. It's literally just a bunch of bunk beds with a big old furnace in the middle, wood stove. So, yeah, you'd be cramped in with a lot of people, but it might be cozy. I want to show you guys the framing of these buildings real quick because they make like a relief cut. Put a bigger log, smaller log, bigger log, smaller log. This next building at the saw log camp is a winch building. They actually use it to drag logs up the hill. They have a big old steam engine winch in here that I'll show you guys. I'm gonna do a wide angle so you guys can see it a little bit better. Okay, so that winch would actually, it's hard to see, but pull logs up the hill, steam powered. We also got all the tools on the wall for repairing it if it ever broke down. Okay, so that was a basic little camp there. Kind of show you guys how they lived in the late 1800s. Okay, so now we're at 16 and this is where they start showing more of a futuristic approach to stuff. So everything before 16 was 1800s to 1900s, but now this is going to today and it's starts showing how the tools get advanced and whatnot. It's hard to see because of the glass on these cases, but this is a huge two person saw that they would use to cut down trees because clearly they wanted to use engine powered things, make the work a little bit easier. Sorry, it's hard to get the history here, but hopefully you guys can read most of that. The next few things will show why horses weren't able to be used anymore, or not as frequently at least, because of the advancement of vehicles. So take a look at this, guys. Uh, they would put chains on the tires for winter. And obviously the wood is on a sled. Starting to get even more advanced. They started bringing heavy equipment like this into the logging fields. It was called a timber jack. Clearly it has a lot of horsepower and can do the work of many men and horses could do in the past. Got the logs hooked up to the back. So you guys the controls and the sitting area. Nothing too, too fancy, but clearly did the job. This is the steam engine they started using um, for sure uh, 40 years or so, I think, before transport trucks. So this is the big steam engine for the train. Get you guys a wide angle. Imagine throwing coal in this big old thing all day. Okay, let's go get the history for you guys. 
Okay, this is a bit of history about the trucks and trains. One thing I want to mention, these are all donated by different companies for this uh, Exhibit Trail. Okay, as we're coming to the end here, um, there's uh, two buildings that I can't go in due to COVID, so that kind of sucks. But um, I'll show you guys them. And I hope you guys enjoy the amount of history I've been getting either way. These are just um, rooms that have in informational boards and maybe even videos. But at least we have these still, so. This is number 18, so after this, two more to go. This is all about the history and how logging has caused some fights and whatnot, but. Another building that sadly I can't go in for this informational video, but you guys will have to come here and check it out yourself after COVID or when these open back up. Number 19 talking about Algonquin's logging today and how they've been doing this forever and making furniture and stuff that we use today and have been using. As I come up to this last plaque, please smash that like, subscribe, comment, let me know what you liked about this trail and let me know if you're interested in coming to it because Algonquin's a great provincial park and I was here for five days our five nights, six days, and I actually loved it very much. So hopefully you guys can come here too. So I made it to the end. Six, six generations of logging. This is this guy's, I'm assuming great, 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 couple great grandpas, 1830s to present day. And this is the end of the trail.